Hello, people. How you doing? This is Lee Cole here with my partner, James Proctor. Hi. And today, we're going to talk about a guy that uh, came into our chat the other day and started with us for no reason. We didn't even know who this damn guy was. And we've done a lot of research on him. And now uh, we have who I think knows more about the Philadelphia mob than anybody on here. Jeff Canarsi. Jeff, how you doing? Good, Lee. How are you? Hello, James. Hey, how are you doing, Jeff? Doing good. Doing good. Well, you know, uh, is this his MO? Is this John Rubio's MO? To, is he very sensitive? He likes to oh, yeah, people? yeah. Yeah, incredibly so. He, uh, you know, as you know, because I've, I've said it on my show and, and I told you uh, privately that he has very thin skin. And when he was, believe it or not, testifying at the Joey Merlino trial, he kept staring at me. And what ended up transpiring as a result of that is the feds told him who I was, how they knew who I was at the time. Not really sure. And almost immediately that first day after trial, he starts sending me threats. And one of the things he kept saying over and over again, first he started leaving posts like he's done on your show and he kept calling himself an American hero, an American hero. And that everything that I was saying wasn't true, but I was sitting there in court taking notes. So it's like he, he has very thin skin, very thin skin. Well, this yeah, is I the guess guy that spent that the majority. He, uh, I'm sorry. No, I, this is a guy I, that spent the majority of his life wired and as a and and as an informant. Just a hundred percent. I'm sorry. No, no. What I was saying is, I guess he's saying he's an American hero because, you know, he wore a wire and he he thinks he was um, helping the government by having a wire for five years. But, you know, we know that he continued to commit crimes and, Absolutely. you know, we'll talk about how he got in trouble later on the gene and um, John um, a light show. Well, oh, yeah. I'm gonna, well, I'm going to play, I'm going to play that right now. This is what led to him getting in trouble because he, one, he has a big mouth, but this is what led to him getting in trouble in that 2020. Is, right. Wasn't, wasn't too great between me and them. Um, you know, uh, uh, we didn't get along. I mean, uh, uh, that's the best I could put it. And we didn't get along. I was. Well, you actually was, worked for a long time then. I didn't realize you were doing this for this long and you still did two years in prison. And the guy that was involved with the drugs with Joey Molino and the thing, he only did five years. So actually well, he cut some deal himself. Was he a cooperator or no? No. Well, uh, uh, more back to Felix, um, you know, and, and, and to ingrain your question is, is um, I almost ruined the case and I, I regret it. I mean, listen, I'm not here to brag about it. Uh, you know, it's another it was another mistake in my life that, you know, I just couldn't get over it. But th that case was, I mean, over 150. It was supposed to be over 150 indictments and. If you if you if you did any research, or I could tell you that most people didn't get a lot of time because of that, and that's because I fucked up. I mean, I kept, I almost I almost felt like I could be a better criminal because I worked for them because I knew they weren't watching me. I knew that. I mean, I was committing more crimes when I was working for them than when. When I was on the street and they were paying me, they were paying me fifteen thousand dollars a month and I was making another fifteen thousand dollars a month committing crimes. You were getting so, fifteen thousand. Jeff, can I ask you a question? How many times have we heard uh, these informants say that they make more money while working for the FBI as informants than when they weren't? Ninety nine out of one hundred. Ninety nine out of one hundred. And do you believe he was really making fifteen thousand dollars a month? Yeah, because he made, he made he was making five hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. Okay, let me continue this. Thousand in a month. Yeah, and you know that's another thing that I, I I'm glad that you brought that up. Is I didn't bring it up. But you, yeah. <laughs> well, I brought it up. Well, I mean, well, no, you asked me about it, so I'll tell you that. You know, on the stand and. Um, my friend that we've spoke to, I'm not going to I'm not going to mention his name that, you know, continues to slander me and doesn't know his ass from his elbow. Um, he, he keeps saying how much you get paid. Well, now people have to take this into consideration. And this will also help answer Felix's question is when you get caught and you're a criminal like I was, I had a lot of money. 
my house bills alone were 8,000 a month. I had four cars and I was living in Scarsdale. Right. So now you can't just, the feds can't just move you into a shack at that point. You've got to continue to live the lifestyle. You have to look good. When they took so all that, my money, they, I didn't get no lifestyle. Right. They just took it. Well, they, yeah. So that eight eight thousand of that fifteen thousand that they were paying me a month were just to pay my house bills because you have to give them an ind- you have to give them copies of all your bills. So, and the other seven thousand was for them to put me on the streets and continue to buy dinners, comp- continue to buy drinks. So, and it's taxable. So this guy goes on there and tells people. This piece of shit getting 50. I, I didn't profit a penny off of that. I used it to pay my bills because I couldn't be a criminal anymore. And I had to do their dirty work, pay for dinners and everything. It's not what he meant. So, Jeff, who's he talking about? This guy, this guy saying this about him and that. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so so you really got underneath his skin, didn't you? Oh, yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Because the thing was, is that it, informants like this particular jerk off can come online and and feed you whatever you want to hear but he knows i was sitting at the trial and he knows that i know what he said under oath and so when i started you know sort of exploiting that and telling people he went crazy i mean fucking nuts okay let's say i'm gonna play a little more of this and then we'll stop it Or maybe not. <laughs> Makes it out to be this guy. You're not getting. Well, I'm saying who this guy is. Is he a big earner, the guy? Does he have a lot of money? <laughs> He's a jerk off. Oh. No, he has nothing. He's a homeless he guy. He looks homeless. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, he looks homeless. Yeah. Yeah, he looks yeah. homeless. Um, you know, he's he's been doing this whatever racket he's been doing and uh, for eight, ten years. And I think he's got 600 people that follow him. I mean, uh, on, on Instagram and Twitter. I mean, he's. All right, we'll I mean, get off the air. I want to know who you're talking about. I won't ask yeah, on the air because you're not saying his name. I have also- uh, but, but, you know, to answer, you know, that's a, I. Well, for a homeless guy, you really bothered the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For somebody who has only 600 followers, he really got angry with me, didn't he? <laughs> yes. If you only have 600 followers, the best thing to, for him to do is not to even reply to you. Yeah. Why waste your time? I'm nobody, right? <laughs> That's what they. That's what these guys always do. He ain't got no followers. He ain't got no money. Nobody uh-huh. knows him. It, but yet they're so bothered by an absolute nobody that this is what they do. Well, I like to tell Mr. Rubio today that I have no money. I don't have that many followers. <laughs> Gerard punched me in the temple. Uh, and besides that, you know, uh, James. Now James got Fox. I'm not going to lie for James. He lives in a nice big house with a hot little wife. So if you're going to bother anybody, go after James, not us. Okay. <laughs> so, so I was, you know who Pass, uh, Patsy uh, Pasquale Pasquale Pirello Pirello Pirello. Pirello. Right? Yep. Absolutely. So he, so this guy, uh, Patsy, took him underneath his wing when he was like 14 years old, if I'm right. That's and the story. Even yep. when he was, even when he was 14, he owed Patsy money. And his father, I believe this is his father. Yep. Is it? Yes, okay. it is. So his father bailed him out and saved his butt. 100 percent Patsy. And Patsy, unfortunately, kept trusting him. And it backfired on Patsy, didn't it? It did. It did. And and one of the interesting things was when this medical cream stuff started, it was really Rubio who brought the brochures to Patsy Perello and said, we should really get involved in this. We should do this. And Patsy said, OK, what's the plan? He's like, well, I'm thinking of going down to Florida and talking to Joey Merlino. And Patsy told him, stay the fuck away from Joey Merlino. Now, what does that mean? Not really sure. But it just goes to prove that what Rubio ends up telling the feds was total bullshit. It was Joey had nothing to do with it. He never took a dime from any of that. From none of it. Jeff, Jeff, can it, you explain to us about? Can you explain to us what this uh, cream was all about? Yeah, I mean, it's like a an o- opioid cream. So, like, they were doing a lot of creams, like you know, when you you have surgery, they'll give you pills or whatever. But now they had a cream right. that you can rub, and doctors were getting a kickback 
off of how much cream they were selling. So naturally, right, you go to 30 different doctors. They all start writing scripts. So it's a money collection. However, what's very interesting, and I just I'm going to pull it up here really quick, is that Rubio's uh, sort of partners in this were um, Augie Camacho, Wayne Kreisberg, Anthony Cirillo, and other people. But under what he told the FBI was Joey Merlino was procuring these doctors and then under cross-examination said, no, Joey had nothing to do with it. Hmm. Nothing at all. Uh, and yet when they asked him, did you, did you pay Joey Merlino? He said, no, we never gave Joey a dime. So why is Joey even indicted in that case to begin right. with? It, it just doesn't make any sense. And out of the 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 doctors, not a single doctor was indicted. Not a single doctor came to, to testify against anybody and not a single doctor was because uh, usually technically if a doctor gets involved in any kind of prescription fraud, they can't be a doctor no more. Right. This didn't happen to a single doctor. So the question you have to ask yourself is if Rubio was telling the truth, why did not a single doctor get in trouble for this? It's yeah, because it's, so it's, it's, one of those, it's one of those things. Again, they got their eyes on getting Joey. hundred percent. It's like John Gotti senior. They, they put their eyes on somebody and that's who they want. A hundred percent. And in reality, uh, how okay. Joey even met Rubio. So, it, go ahead. Uh, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, Jeff, you know, you're telling me a lot of stuff that I had no idea you were going to tell me about. And it's very fascinating. Yeah. It just goes to show how much we don't know about this. <laughs> so, yeah. And we studied, you know, this is fascinating. We would have left the cream out of it and everything. And I didn't realize that. And you're talking about when all the opioid stuff with the uh, right. was going on, the lollipops and all of that, uh, all of that, all of that. So, what are the, so, what are they, we, so go ahead. So was this Rubio like a smart guy though? Where, no. where he, he would, he, he, no. seemed to, he seemed to be like, a, I, I, I nicknamed him mush behind his back because everything he touched turned to mush. He wasn't good at earning, wasn't good at doing anything. He certainly wasn't violent, except for his wife, who he beat. Uh, he just, when you look at the mentality of trying to blackmail a judge, trying to blackmail the prosecutors, getting caught on a prison phone call saying, I am going to milk this trial for everything I can fucking get. Because he had a book deal with Anna, George Anastasia. So he was trying to delay the trial, delay the trial, delay the trial. And at one point, he actually refused to even testify unless they gave him more money. So what does that tell you? This this is just a money grab. I mean, if you're doing the American hero role, then in your mind, the right thing to do is testify against an evil, horrible person. But yet it was money driven. Everything, every single bit of this he, was money driven. And he came at us because we mentioned that uh, – um, what was it that we mentioned on him that, that pissed him off, James? Do you know? Yeah, I don't even know what we, we mentioned except that we were we were talking about it was about Merlino and I, I don't even know what Oh what that's what it was. Him. We were we were going after Ralph Natale. Natale. He that's comes right. on and he said he said that Ralph Natale was uh a good guy and that Joey's was telling the truth. Uh, Joey's Joey's the one lying and and Ralph Natale was telling the truth. So it's obvious that he was a big fan of Ralph Natale's. Well, I think it's easy to take a position. Uh, he 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 got caught on a transcript saying uh, on a wiretap saying that he blamed Joey Merlino for all of his fucking problems. This was all Joey's fault. He's going to see that Joey gets three hundred thousand years in jail, mm -hmm. and it's all because Rubio gets caught selling drugs, and the yes. feds make a deal with him of we'll forgive everything. You go down to Florida, see what you can do. Now, here's what's interesting. There was what they call Chris, which was an offshore gambling site. In other mm -hmm. words, you gamble, all the money's offshore. Rubio gets put in charge of collecting the money. And guess what Rubio does? He steals it. Mm -hmm. He steals Get over here. He steals over $350,000. His job was to go to JFK, get the money, and then distribute it to people who won, et cetera, and kick back, and et cetera. He mm -hmm. steals the money, and this is how he gets close to Joey. He steals the money, starts making up excuses. Now they're going to kill him. And who does he call to save his fucking life? He calls Joey, and he explains to Joey, 
You know, they're saying I stole money. And all Joey ever said to him was, you have to do the right thing as a man. You owe money. You pay the money. If it wasn't for Joey stepping in and doing that, they'd have killed him. So that was the only commonality between the two of them. Because How did they every meet time, again? How did they meet? They met through the Genovese crime family. Right. And after Rubio gets arrested for narcotics, yeah. he says, you know, through other people, I could probably get close to Joey. So, of course, the feds are like, absolutely. And that's go right. Ahead. When Joey first got that, got out, right? That was around 2011, yeah. 2012. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And every time, it's funny because he wore a wire consistently. And every time, mm -hmm. He tried to get Joey to say something. Joey would tell him, don't talk to me about criminal shit. I'm retired. I want no part of this life. Go right. do your own thing. And it's funny because Rubio, of course, tells the government that Augie Camacho, Cirillo, Wayne Kreisberg, all of these people involved in the indictment, they all have seen Joey. They've all been with Joey. Mm -hmm. And then when they were under examination on the stand, they all said, we've never met Joey Merlino in our life. We don't even know him. So he just he lied nonstop yeah. from one day to the next. Right. And this and this guy does not reward his friends very well because he usually turns on guys that have helped him out, saved his behind. He doesn't care. No, absolutely not. And I, I have to I misspoke. It was four hundred thousand dollars, not three hundred thousand. Just wanted to clear that up to make sure I was accurate on that. So did he wind up did he wind up spending all this money? Yeah, I mean, he, listen, he says he he has – who do you know other than Mr. Proctor upstairs there? Who do you know has a, a $15,000 a month house payment? Like, do you know how big of a house that's going to be? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't – Four cars? Either. Okay, what's the yeah. max? Four cars? Maybe you're paying 4500 a month? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe and five. He's living in Scar and he's living in Scarsdale. Right, which like, is – dude, chill out. Right. Do the fleet one. Right, right, <laughs> right. So – his excuse on that shit show of, well, I've got all of these bills. What he's not explaining to anybody is that the feds, how to explain this without getting people confused. It's called deferment. And and basically mm -hmm. when you're on the stand, like if Lee's on the stand and, and I'm cross-examining him, I say, Lee, have you been paid for your testimony? He can honestly say no because the bulk of his payments are coming after the trial. Right. right? But the whole time, like this thing about receipts, you do have to give receipts, but they're giving you money on the back end, nonstop. Mm -hmm. A thousand for this, thousand for that. So what I'd like to know is how big was the house he was living in? Where fifteen grand of that, or ten grand of that, is to to bills? Like you're a horrible gangster if you well, got bills at ten grand well, a month. One, a, one, a one bedroom in uh, in Scarsdale goes for a lot of it by itself. I don't know. Have you ever been to Scarsdale? No, nah, no. Nah. I don't even know where Scarsdale, it is. Well, you heard of Bronxville, right? I have yeah, street, there's, Scar, there's Scarsdale, uh, Bronxville, and Hartsdale, uh, uh, and they're all in the same area, and they're all, uh, they're considered uh, probably after Hollywood, the second richest area in America to live. Is that in Long so, Island? So you or where? What no, state? that's in Westchester County. I, it's not okay. Westchester County. I'm talking about when he when he lived there. It's, yeah. it, everything's worn down in New York since then. No, it's, it's a very expensive borough to live in that area, that part of Westchester, very expensive. So I guess that uh, he probably lives there because I'm guessing he grew up there. Yeah, he grew up in the area. Though, yeah. So he said Yonkers, but Yonkers is nothing like Scarsdale. No, 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 no. A little bit different. You, you know? you, if he had said New Rochelle, then I could, you know, you could make that argument, but no. No. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, I spent half my life in, growing up in Yonkers, so I know Yonkers like the back of my hand, and uh, it's a pretty rough, it, they got some really nice areas to outskirts of Yonkers, but in general, Yonkers is not the best place to live, uh, right. but his organization, he started his crime, uh, I believe, his father, did his father get him into that, his father was an associate with the Genovese family, is that correct? Correct, correct. Okay, and and so, but his father always saved his behind too when he ripped somebody off. I noticed. Yeah, that seems to be a common denominator with this guy. Is is every right. time he gets into something, it's it's everybody else's fault. He even had tried on the stand to blame uh, uh, S. A. Agent uh, Inzarillo for all mm. of the problems, saying, "Well, S. A. Inzarillo, who was because for ninety four of one hundred and fourteen days, he went unsupervised by the feds, which is unheard of because wow. you normally, if you have a handler." Every couple of days you're seeing him, you're giving him tapes. But for 94 days, this guy was not contacted. 
uh, and Agent Anzarello knew he was out breaking the law, doing his own kind of thing. So what he tries to do when he gets caught up is tries to blame everything on a on an FBI agent. And in fact, out of this case, one FBI agent was fired mm-hmm. and another one was suspended for actions revolving around this indictment, wow. which it's crazy. I'm sorry. And so when he, uh, James, do you have anything? To, I'm going to ask him one more question. Do you have anything you want to ask before I ask my question? No, I mean, I don't have anything else regarding regarding this. It's just a fascinating a uh, lot of insight that, uh, you know, uh, that you're giving us. And I appreciate it. Not a problem. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, here's what I want to ask you. So he goes on a John and Gene show and does that and, and gets in trouble with the judge. Eventually, the judge just yelled at him and smacked his hand and said, don't do that again. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it pulls you into it. Right. Uh, why don't you tell us exactly when he was in court for that whole situation? Why did judge eventually only smacked him in the hand and let him go? I, you know, I, I don't know why Sullivan did that. I it, it it's it's really crazy. But what ended up basically happening, the short form was, like I said earlier, the FBI pretty much, I think, knew who I was. I was sitting with some people and et cetera. And they told Rubio who I was. And he began assailing me on Twitter and everything else. And I thought it was hilarious. So the next day in court, I, I talked to Joey and, and Edwin Jacobs, his lawyer, and I said, listen, this is what transpired. They said, send us all the screenshots. So I did. And unfortunately, at that point in the trial, it's like, why open up another can of worms? It looks like it's going to be a mistrial anyway. Yeah. And then what ended up happening down the line, like you just said, after he went on the doofus and doofus show, uh, the Las Vegas parole division started – to because Judge Sullivan can't order an investigation on him. It has to come from the parole division in Las right. Vegas. So they started looking into him and they came across my screenshots. Hmm. What happened as a result of that is I then received an email from the Las Vegas parole department asking me where those texts came from, how it all went down. And I typed it up. They asked me to just type it up in a form, which I did. Then they actually called me on the phone and they said, We are going to forward this to the judge in the case. Is that okay? Because it's going to go public. And if you're not comfortable with that, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I said, no, that's fine. And what my hope out of that was, was that the judge would look at it, see it and say, wait a second. We had this, this whole, this whole time he was under oath. He's doing all this kind of shit. Uh, We need to look back at this case, but ultimately Joey pleads out, gets gambling charges. It's not a big deal. But what ended up happening was, People on the internet came across uh, the type form letter, which I had to turn in, which there were, I think, two or three other people that did the same thing. And all of a sudden, I become a rat. What they don't understand is he didn't get any criminal charges out of that. Uh, I did not testify against anybody. And guess what? Joey's my friend. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to help him in that case. And if you have a guy that on Thursday is testifying to A, B, C, and D, then threatening me, and we you've seen the photos, he's negating what he just said on the stand. That's important because it proves he's a liar. And that's right. the only reason why I did it. Well, Still you're also a journalist as well. And that's something people need to understand that you were acting the capacity of a journalist during right. this trial. And especially you know, at that and especially at that time, because this YouTube thing really didn't exist. It was right. just beginning. Yeah. I mean, John and Gene, uh, you know. Like them, I hate them. They would have, like, they they were one of the first people, one of the first informants here. Well, and that's and, that's uh, that's the only frustrating thing that I find is is and we you know this and James you know this. Mm-hmm. I consistently keep hearing informants don't lie, and it doesn't matter how much paperwork you put out to show them A B C and D and E. Here's them lying on the stand. They don't care, because to them, informants are the fucking heroes, and they're not. They're low lives. That's just how I see it. Right, and, they and can, I would say if yeah. people, if people don't think informants live, read Underboss. Right, read right. what Sammy wrote in Underboss twenty years ago, whenever he did it, and and read just actual real stories now, how it really went down. That you know that that's like the Bible of uh, the Gambino family for that because he's the one that told the story, so everybody believes what Sonny what Sammy says. Right, right. And and I this is the thing I always stand by, and, and I, I mean this. They'll put they'll put this on my grave. I will respect an informant when they wake up on a Sunday morning and say, you know what, I'm tired of this life. I, I need to change my life. And they go and admit to everything they did and don't mention anybody else. Right. 
It's not a come to Jesus. Oh, I woke up and wanted to change my life. No, you woke up, wanted money and wanted to bury 50 other people. Cause let's yeah. be honest, 90% of the guys that are on other than Gravano, Francis, and some of these guys, who were they in the life They're, They were nobody because if you have to mention Tommy Patera and this one and that one, and we don't know, we never heard of Sal Polizzi before, then who really were you on the streets? And, and, yeah. and that's just kind of my point. If you have to bury other people to get a deal, then you're really not anybody. Yeah. Sure. Cause they was looking for, um, you know, he was like, and this is what's interesting with, uh, with Philly, you know, with, um, I get, I know South Philly must, it's just a small, it's a small area. And so yeah. Ralph Natale, he was one that was also shopping a book. He got the book and then I think even a movie and then, you know, this guy's doing it and he wasn't even really a Philly guy, but, uh, he was going to work with George, Anastasia, right? For a biography. Is that what? Um, yeah, there was, there was some yeah. kind of deal he had worked out with George Anastasia where George says, Hey, I really want to write your story. Of course, uh, George does because he has an obsession with Joey. That's just kind of how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they found out, and, and that's the other thing about this case in particular is that Rubio had said, you know, I got this huge six figure deal with George Anastasia. So I want to drag this trial out so I can make mm -hmm. more money. Right. Well, here's what's interesting. You can't play that tape in court. Why not? You can play like a wiretap of Joey saying, I'm not involved in anything. Leave me the fuck alone. But you can't hmm. play the you can't play the tape of him saying, I'm gonna lie and do whatever I have wow. to do. Like it's just it's very strange how at the federal system how that works. It, it just you did know. they go behind well, maybe because of the jury, but did they at least go to the judge behind chambers say and show the judge what was happening to may influence the decision for a mistrial. Yeah. I mean, they, they definitely a hundred percent, you know, had back and forth, but yeah. judge Sullivan, you know, it, it's like kind of the end summation of this was that the government, he said to the government, when the government decided, you know what, we're done with this. We're just going to, we're going to, we're going to allow Joey to take a plea on gambling charges. Right. Uh, the judge says to the, to the prosecution, you told me you had a slam dunk. You had evidence. Why are you giving up? If you have all this overwhelming evidence, why are you giving up? And the reason why they gave up is because they knew Rubio had just absolutely entirely botched the case. So he was the key witness then in this trial. Key failure in every sense of the imagination. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. probably legitimately the worst. Like I've heard other people say this one's the worst. He was the worst. He was yeah. the worst. Because mm -hmm. he, was he was not. Worse, he was worse than a light? A hundred percent. Because nothing he said made any sense. Nothing he said was the truth. And, and to show you how spiteful and nasty the government is, and he was, mm -hmm. is he, he was getting battered on the stand and he ends up saying, they asked him a very specific question. How did Joey meet his rep, his medical rep? And who was the rep? And he's like, oh, well, he was fucking his rep. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that have to do with anything? So he's basically right. saying in federal court, Joey's having an affair, this, that, the third. Mm -hmm. You, you should have heard the courtroom. It was like, oh, <gasps> Like of all the things that, so it's it was a crazy, so crazy. He just, crazy he just came off. He just came off really bad. He came off like a guy that got caught and was angry at the guy who really didn't get him in trouble, but he he needed a target, you know. Mm -hmm. And and that's just, uh, you know, you've seen a lot of stuff on stands where guys don't like each other. Like I think John Gotti Jr. and A Light had a couple yeah. of right. instances where they went back and forth, but this one it just seemed like. One guy was in love with another guy and the guy didn't want nothing to do with him. Mm. And so it was like, okay, well, I'm going to take all, all my rage and anger out on you now. Horrible. Like he didn't even come off as a gangster. He came off as like a nerd that you mm. like shook down for extra milk money at school. You yeah. know what I mean? He didn't come off as a tough guy at all. All right. Well, we're going to ask you a couple more questions and I apologize for the people with the internet, the way it's going in and out. <laughs> we have no you're, idea you're, why. You seem okay. okay, at least from our side. Yeah, you look fine yeah. from our side. Uh, uh, all right, good. James, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, James, if you have one question you want to ask, because I'm going to finish this off with two questions to Jeff, what would you like to ask him yeah. as, a fi as a final question? Yeah, and so this is this is kind of fascinating. Um, so, you know, uh, so you had Lee played this the video with John A. Light, Gene Borello and this guy. And so what's the, what is it with the informants 
here on YouTube and social media, to me, and we just talked about it yesterday about Michael Francis um, and even Sammy that was, it seemed like there was when there was pressure on um, Ruggiano, Anthony Ruggiano, that uh, these guys went to bat for him and said, yeah, he's a, a great, great guy. He, he tells the truth. And even Francis continues to say that Ruggiano was a made guy, which we know he wasn't. But the, the point of all this is what is it with the informants that they seem to have a pact, don't they? They, 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 they watch each other's back or they're, they're kind of in this circle or something. And, you know, it doesn't matter if the truth comes out, they would, they know each other's line, but they will put out whatever message is uh, that benefits them the most. Do you see that with the way that, the, oh yeah, YouTube uh, thing and social yeah. media is well, and that's here's the funny thing, right? So everybody yeah. knows who everybody knows who I sued, right? I can't talk about that legally, but you guys know, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. And one of the funniest things ever was right after the paperwork drops, all over it, all over uh, the social media was, oh, he got chased from the streets. I was never in the streets. <laughs> yeah, how can I get chased from the streets? And then this guy goes into federal court. And tells the federal judge that I and my lawyer are associated with this one, with this one, with this mm. one. And the judge is like looking at me like, what the fuck did I just walk into? But it seems like these guys, they sit there and try to act like the life is miles away. All right. But I almost guarantee you that if somebody came to them and says, you want back in, they'd go running in a minute. Right. They can't, they can't let go of that life. And I think that anybody that they see that remotely is related to somebody that they can, because they're all manipulating each other at the they end are. of the day. If you watch close, they manipulate each other. Uh, and it's a money grab for everybody. So when they see somebody like Ruggiano getting piled on, the mm. natural thing is, do you, they really don't give a fuck about him. I'll be honest right. with you. They don't care, but if they think they can make money off of it, they're going to do it. Right. And that just seems to be the way that, you know, this kind of operates, but it, it's funny to watch. Yeah. No, Definitely. Yeah, Francis doesn't. Michael Francis does not have to come up. First of all, sometimes I wonder how much about the mob Michael Francis knows because he said he said that uh, that uh, Lisi and he said that Ruggiano were made men. Everybody knows they weren't. Why would he say that on his show? He's a bit. Dated, let, me, man. Let, let me put it this way: Michael Francis, in reality, is this big. But in his mind, he's this big. Uh, and, you know, just with the gas uh, tax scam, he didn't invent it. He tried to move muscle in. Mm -hmm. And Castle told him, nah, you're not going to do that because if you do, we'll kill you, right? Yeah. His, his own father told me, guys, that suspected he was stealing from them. If you need to kill him, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So uh, Francis likes and, and there's another documentary that's coming out this week called How to Be a Mob Boss. What the fuck hmm. does Michael Francis know about that? Really? <laughs> it's going to be Francis, Lee's buddy, Gravano, and Ruggiano. And and all they're going to do is talk about John Gotti again. That's it. That's what they do. Interesting. Where's it going to be on Netflix? Netflix. Wow. Yep. Hmm. Yep. And you so got they're gonna Gravano. Do, they're gonna, and, so they're going to eat this Gotti thing up for, for all they can. I mean, how many more shows are they going to have on John Gotti? Why don't they – I have an idea. Why don't they have a show – I'm Michael Francis, just him. Yeah, he 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 really doesn't like me. Michael Francis does not like me one bit, uh, and that's okay. He may say he doesn't, you know. Oh, I've never heard of that guy, but I I have screenshots of him messaging me saying, "What is your problem with me? Why do you keep insulting me?" I says, "Why don't you admit you're a fucking rat?" Yeah, and we've just, had his wife contact us too. So, yeah, he's he's uh, he's another one, but they're all the same. They're all the same. Like yeah. if. If you truly, and here's the thing, if you've truly changed and you're all about God, why are you telling these gangster stories like for money? Like it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. That whole, that, that whole thing. It, it's very, because, you know, now he talks about how many times he was with his father and we know that he was barely with his father over barely. a long period of time. Barely. Uh, okay. Um. So I wanted to ask you in, in, in a, in a short summation, give us your opinion, your honest opinion on John Marshmallow Balls Rubio. <laughs> uh, I think he's a kid 
that well he's not a kid but i think he's a degenerate in every sense of the word that was caught up in the streets like a lot of other guys gets immediately in trouble because he's not very bright uh used his father his whole life to get out of a jam and then when he gets in another jam because the genovese crime family's going to kill him he goes running to joey to save his life which you know joey helps him in, in, in that particular case uh and I, I think it's a story of a weakling who didn't have any friends growing up, attaches himself to somebody who's charismatic, powerful, and then when he gets in trouble, now he's got the perfect out. Yeah, he's got the ace up his sleeve all day long. And really, at the end of the day, uh, I, I, I go back to who the fuck is he? Had anybody heard of this guy ever before? No, not before this trial. Uh, and that's with a lot of these guys, even... Borello and, and some of these whoever heard of these guys before that if it's not yeah. for Rodney Gialonzo who the hell is Gene Borello nobody so that's exactly. just kind of my my stance because your reputation has to precede you your reputation if it's built off another man says a lot says a lot well you got a yeah. great point you got Sammy Gravano built off John Gotti right. you have John A. Light built off of uh Junior yep you have uh Borello built off Vinny Asaro and Ronnie G you got Jimmy Calandra built off of Ronnie G. Uh, what's his name? Sparrow. Uh, got it. Sparrow. Yeah, Sparrow. Yeah, Sparrow and 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 Beth Avenue, and and you know these guys all have fascinating lives. They have some wild lives. They should stick to telling the truth instead of trying. So I'm going to ask you with this question, Jeff. I'm going to let you determine what the answer is on this for this show. Is John Rubio a gangster or a prankster? He's a prankster in every sense of the imagination. Every <laughs> sense. Okay. Every sense. Okay. And we're not going to even say that, people. Today, Jeff has uh, done our gangster or prankster. <laughs> and uh, he knows him. You see, people, you got to understand. Jeff knows him, has seen yeah. him, has dealt with him for a long period of time. I didn't even know who this damn guy was until he attacked us in our, in, in our message board. He's not even supposed to be doing that. According well, to his well, paperwork. I hope he's you, know. you figured he'd be a little bit smart of that research people and say, who don't you attack here? Who, who if you're going to attack certain people, who are the ones you don't attack? Right. No, I agree. Do his research. I agree. So he, earned himself a, he had earned himself a show. And uh, <laughs> we got a bonus here because you came on. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, we were gonna, if you didn't show up, we were going to do the show. And 90% of the stuff you put out there, Jeff, I had no idea about. James could probably say the same thing. We knew basic knowledge on him. And then when you talked to me, uh, something got in my head about, I remember your case and then Rubio, the name, and I'm sorry, is this the guy that you had the issues with? Yep. <laughs> you know? so, you're, so you were the first prick on here. Yeah. That pissed you guys off. That's what it comes yeah. down to. And all I was doing was literally it. All I did, like, it's one thing if I went on, I was like, okay, you goofy looking bastard. And I say all this stuff, but it was just, here's what happened today in trial. This is the exact testimony of what happened. And he would go fucking nuts. Mm. He would just go absolutely fucking crazy. And then he would accuse me of sucking Joey's thing and, and all of this. Mm. But that's what told me. That's what told me that Rubio was enamored with Joey. Because if the first thing you're going to say to me is, oh, you're sucking this guy's prick, this, that, what is that? If I was or I wasn't, which wasn't the case, but why is that your go-to? Because if your immediate response is to threaten, to make fun of, then what it really is is you're mad because the truth's coming out and you want to right. look like you want to look like a hero to everybody, but you're like a, a jerk off. That's it. Do you That's think that it. John Rubio has a look? Do you think John Rubio has a little Monica Lewinsky in him? Oh yeah, I think him. I think him and the douche talk. I think they get along great because they're they're almost the same sort of mentality. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. I tried to get the, I tried to get throughout the show without mentioning, but you know what he's going to do? He's going to insult this show anyway. Of course they, they are. They're going to they're going to attack everybody. Oh, look at him talking about a rat now. Blah blah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Well, yeah. uh, what well, well, this? And listen, we want to even talk about this guy. Mention this guy. Uh, he should just go away and do his thing. Oh, now you're now you're going to get some messages from him. <laughs> Guaranteed, you're oh, going to yeah. get some now. Uh, uh, you know, I eat that stuff up. Oh, uh, I know, I know. 
I, I'll do a show on every damn message you send. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know, well, like, all you uh, got to do is just say, why don't you just go back to beating your wife? Because he's another one. Yeah, Here we go. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know about mm. that. I don't know about that. So until I read about it, I'm, I'm sure you know what you're talking about. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not sure about that. So uh, I, I won't talk about that until after he attacks. Uh, well, otherwise, I, we can it. I have I have the paperwork for it. So. Oh, you do. And I, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, would, I would listen as much as I don't like people. Yeah. I'm, I would never put that on somebody. Just never never. Say that. But no, it was it was God all in federal. It was all in court. I mean, it's public knowledge. So and I'm sure uh, Joey will talk about it at some point, too. So, hey, listen, he has thin skin. We're called we're called kidnappers on here. Child molesters on here. We're called the worst things on here. Yep. Absolutely. And these guys who, who claim to be in the street and to be tough guys are so sensitive that they get their feelings hurt here. Sammy Gavano said that he would never mention anybody. Two of the last three weeks, he's mentioned me now. Because they're sensitive. If you get underneath their skin with the right thing, they're super sensitive. Well, and they're what, cowards. What people don't realize, too, and, and this goes for anybody, if you're telling the truth, that's what bothers them the most. Because if it was all bullshit, they would just say, oh, he's full of shit. What do you care? Mm-hmm. But it's a demeanor that follows what you put out that tells you everything about them. But the problem with the, the YouTube audience is I think they're very disillusioned with what the truth is these days and you can put the truth out you know for the next six years lee and they're always going to say you're lying they're always right. going to say it. so okay so so jeff you're kind of guilty of what uh, of something that i was at the point in my in my life where i thought that people were exaggerating on how bad informants were right were and i decided that i was going to interview them right and then i've come to the conclusion after that whole thing went down with sammy and watching Sammy's face and what Sammy said, I was like, man, these have some bad people, these informants. Killers. Oh, no, absolutely. They're killers. Yeah. And they absolutely. would kill again. A hundred percent. I felt like if I walked into Sammy's building and nobody was in there and he was just You're there with his son, out. there's a chance that, yeah, to this day. Yeah. Because it's in their bar. You right. can't get rid of that. Nope. And, and, and so that whole thing that happened with you and John A. Light. Right. When they come at you with that, what is your response to them? Because that happened years ago. Yeah. And what is your response to them about that? Uh, My response to that is, like many other people, uh, I honestly didn't know exactly who he was. I I knew enough about him, so I can't sit here and say, oh, I had no clue. Um, I was starting a show, and I thought this is the best way to start, even if it causes me some you know damage to my reputation it's worth it because i'm going to try to start a show i'm just getting involved in all of this stuff and i realized very quickly this was a very 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 bad mistake so and here's what's funny and and this is what i think lee you'll understand better than most people is they say jeff canarsi's a nobody he doesn't know a fucking person but yet i was with a late at one point correct or not correct right then yeah. they'll turn around and they'll say, he doesn't know this one. He doesn't know that one. So it's when they're upset at you, like, because a lot of these people believe a lights, this big tough guy and they're enamored with him. Jeff Canarsie was around him. Doesn't that make me knowing somebody you would think, yeah. but when they're angry at you, they, they twist the knife the other direction. You, you know what I mean? So it's like one minute being around an informant is, wow, he knows an informant. Holy crap. He knows people. But then in reality, it just, you know, listen, at the end of the day, I made the mistake, but I learned quicker than other people. It it is what it is. I don't, I've never hid that. I've always been honest about that. I've always been upfront about that. And if you think I didn't get questions from people in Philly about that, you'd be wrong because I did. I had to answer for that. Uh, But I think everybody understood what I was trying to do. And, uh, no one can back after that. No one can back after that. And and people make a mountain out oh, of it's been years. years. It's well, been years. There is somebody that continues to talk about this. And my perspective is we're talking about something that was in 2016. Uh-huh. Uh, I was around this individual for probably a week, give or take, if that, and I was gone. They tend to make it into this. He lived with him for months and months. No, it, it was not. Angel will even tell you. It was a couple of days, and I see who he was, and I said, you know what? Done. 
and she, does, and she does say that. Right, right. But there's that. there's somebody yeah. else that keeps bringing it up nonstop. Like, why are we talking about this? Mm-hmm. You know? So. Yep, yep, exactly. But you know something? Uh, it's part of who I am. I'm, I'm always going to be defined as that. No matter what I do. Oh yeah! Once you but step I come on, that, here. once you step on that landmine lead, that's the only thing that they can throw. Uh, but they use it to manipulate how they feel about you. Because if you're on one, if it appears you're on one side of that fence, they all love Lee. Lee knows a lot of people. He knows people knows people in the life. But the minute you realize they're scumbags and you change your narrative, because you're not allowed to change your mind, Lee. you got to understand this. Hmm. In 10 years, I'm not allowed to change my mind about anything, right? But the minute you do, they go right back to the target button, and that's that's what they can bring at you. And it's, uh, you know, listen, i got to be the only guy in history that shook down a fucking informant that was supposed <laughs> to be a tough guy. So, And I was the only guy on here that actually got Sammy's son to punch me in the face. I know. I know. That's a highlight reel of a <laughs> yeah, lifetime. I mean, and you know it. It's it's kind of funny because, you know, you got people that literally try, and that whole thing people think it was set up. It was an accident. I didn't even mean for that to happen. Well, that's how each day in life we never know what one day in life is going to bring to the. Here, here's my question: For all the people that want to chastise that situation, how many of them have done that? How many of them have gotten in the no. car and says, "Okay, I'm going to go do this"? None of them. None of them, and and, and they won't. And I told you. Uh, the, the, the guys that I know all have said the same thing. Hey, we had the balls to do it. I don't see any of these fucks getting off their ass and doing it. So, you know, more power to you. Yeah, they don't they don't realize that. Guys that were in the life, that no longer in the life, people that like email me every once in a while about the show, they yeah. all say the same thing. That was great. Yeah. It's the people that are the semi simps that come right. in and, and still to this day. And it's the rat When I leave the remark. Yeah, I leave the remarks up unless they're totally vicious. I don't care what you say about me. Right, right. I'm, I'm having a great time here, Jeff, just like you are, James. People, i like to thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank James, you. great job yep. with the research. Thank Jeff, you. I'm so glad that you showed up here because you have made this show into one of, I feel like, one of our best shows ever. Yeah, right, James? Definitely so. so thank you, knowledge. Jeff. Yeah, right. you have not a, a, a not lot a of problem. knowledge right. more than anyone. Jeff, you, thank you. And you and I have had our issues every once in a while, but one thing I could say, you are unfairly treated by many people. Uh, and it's unfortunate. And a lot of that has to do with they don't realize, they don't want to admit how much you know. And there's this one little guy that doesn't want to admit how much you know and the importance of you into this this genre no apparently i'm very jealous of that person which is news to me but that's okay hmm. it is what well, you it can is. always go out and, you can go always go out and buy a couple million views you know well you know i thought about that no <laughs> no. <laughs> no you know listen some people yeah. it, it's like the story of pinocchio i just want to be a real boy that's <laughs> the way i that's the way i see that situation <laughs> you know what i mean so and, Boy, uh, i'll tell you what pinocchio or the dutch boy Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Guys, just hang around for a minute. Uh everybody okay. take care. All right. Uh, Thank like you. Like I said, please set the reminder bell if you haven't subbed here. And also underneath here, we're gonna also have details for the Patreon page with Andrew Gotti and this. We'll put Jeff's in. Jeff, is there anything that you're doing that you'd like people to know about right now? Uh we're doing a series on the waterfront which is about Anthony Scotto, tough Tony Anastasia. It's the complete history of the waterfront. And then tonight I'll be live, but I have no idea what the fuck I'm going to do. So but you're going to be live what time tonight, eight 30. Yeah. And I would tell everybody, if you're subbed to this channel, if you don't know who Jeff Canarsi is, please go uh, sub to his channel because uh, he's very knowledgeable. And uh, I don't, yeah. I have to work 10 times harder. James has to work 10 times harder. Jeff already has this stuff in his head. With that, yeah, Mop Talk care, Radio people. is um, Jeff's channel. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Mop Talk Radio is, and uh, um, we kid around, but you know, you and I, we had a little argument one time, and we can be kind of spiteful when we have our arguments. Jeff. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, people might think that you know, what is Jeff doing on Lee Show, or whatever. Usually, we're like this. Yeah. You know, usually we, we get along fine. Shit just happens. You know, you have a lot of people in here, especially in the mob genre. It was somebody described this to me. 
you got a lot of killers in the mob genre who really are killers. Yeah. You got a lot of bad people in the, in, in the mob genre that, that, that would hurt people if, if they were near you, if they can get their hands on you. 100%. Uh, I know about five, six people alone from the mob genre that's currently in prison. Right. One of my best, you know, uh, best viewers is in prison for two and a half years. He just went back to prison. So, you know, it's, uh, this is a weird genre. You're learning a lot of stuff in here. Uh, you got your people that want to be tough, and then you got people that they're tough, don't mess with them. It's like the old uh, saying I goes, try. don't talk about it, be about it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Okay, people, take care. Thank you so much. Thank you.